What's up, everybody? And today we are reacting to why you never mess with the guard of the tomb of the unknown soldier. I only recently found out about the unknown soldier and um, the idea behind it and what it is. So I'm excited to see this. I'm excited to learn a little bit more about it and also show how badass these people are who are protecting the tomb of the unknown soldier. So, um, yeah, I'm excited to watch this. I will leave a link down below to the original video. Please go over there, like, share, subscribe and all that good stuff to them because I'm sure they will, so they will totally deserve it. And uh, before I get started, original adventures. Me and my wife are converting a U.S. school bus and traveling the United States. Maybe even, maybe we'll even visit the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier, which would be really cool. But if you want to check out the vlogs of us converting the school bus and then eventually traveling the United States, link down below to original adventures, both the YouTube and the Instagram. But for now, let's shut up and let's pop this up and uh, let's react to it, shall we? If you're questioning the officers, remain behind the chains and red! Holy loud. Get behind the rail! The Tomb of the Unknown Soldier is one of the most continuously guarded monuments in the world. It's patrolled 24 hours a day, 365 days a year, regardless of the weather, by an elite regiment of soldiers known as Sentinels. These Sentinels are highly trained. The Sentinels? What a badass name that is. What an absolute badass name. Trained specialist in superb physical condition, ready at a moment's notice to defend the honor of fallen war heroes. So what makes the old guard of the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier so feared and respected? And what happens when people push the boundaries and try to mess with one of the guards? Let's find out. I am definitely up for visiting this. When I travel across the country with my wife um, and the family, I actually would really like to visit this and do a vlog about it. I think that would be really cool. Let me know in the comments what you guys think about that. The Old Guard is essentially ceremonial special forces, and despite oh. their seemingly mundane job, they represent the very best of the best the army can offer. It's so elite that less than 20% of all volunteers are accepted for training, and of those, only a fraction pass training to become fully-fledged tomb guards. In fact, the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier Guard Identification Badge is the third least awarded badge in the entire United States Army, behind military horseman ID badges and astronaut badges. To what holy cow these guys are elite then so do these guys actually get sent abroad though or are they specifically just to protect the tomb now i'm not saying protecting the tomb isn't a hard job because at the end of the day i'm sure you get a lot of idiots that would love to vandalize this thing but do these guys go on operations or do they just protect the tomb because i feel like um if there's enough of them, why would they not send them abroad if they're this elite? To become a tomb guard, an old guard soldier must volunteer by applying for appointment to the tomb through the sergeant of the guard. To be considered for an appointment, the soldier must be highly motivated and disciplined and possess a strong military bearing and soldierly appearance. If appointed, the soldier is assigned to the tomb for an initial two-week training period. Upon reporting to a relief, the trainee is assigned a tomb guard trainer. The trainer informs the trainee of what is expected of them, including following strict rules, training guidelines, and the need for complete dedication and commitment to the tomb. The training wow. cycle is intense, consisting of a series of five exhaustive tests over six to 12 months. These so, geez, it looks pretty difficult, and it sounds pretty difficult. And let's be honest, a lot of people don't realize this, but standing still or just, you know, pacing up and down like that, not scratching, not itching, not budging, not twitching, is incredibly difficult way more difficult than people realize when i passed out the royal marines we instantly got um assigned my troop got assigned to do the opening of parliament and we had to line the roads all the way up to parliament and and the the queen went past and all these different royal family went past and a bunch of important people basically and we had to line the streets and um i remember we had to practice for like a week just standing still like for hours and hours and hours standing still. And I remember being stood across um, another lad who was in my troop, but just to the right of him, every now and again, they would have like medics. I think they were Navy medics, I think. And um, they didn't get trained for it. And literally this lady, this poor lady who was a medic in, in the, I think it was the Navy, but it might, I might be wrong, literally just fainted and face planted straight into the deck in front of everyone. Um, luckily, it wasn't during the actual ceremony. It was during a practice the day before but still 
This type of job's difficult. A lot of people don't realize that. Tests focus on ceremonial performance, uniform preparation, yep. and knowledge. If the trainee completes the training cycle and passes the tests, they are able to flawlessly conduct seven different types of ceremonies, meet the highest standards of uniform preparation, and recite 35 pages of information without error. If the trainee wow. fails any test, they are assigned back to their company. The it sounds very much, and it's nowhere near... Um... What I'm about to compare it to isn't, isn't as, 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 as hard as this, I don't think. But it reminds me of the um, Royal Marine Band. Like, the admin they have to do has to be spotless. Now, they're not general soldiers. They don't practice with a weapon or anything like that. They're strictly just musicians. But the admin they have to do has to be spotless. And that side of it on this reminds me of them a little bit. Successful trainee is awarded the Tomb Guard Identification Badge and will be from then on referred to as a Tomb Guard or Badge Holder by their fellow Sentinels. That's Demonstrating awesome. how serious a role this is considered to be, the Tomb Guard Identification Badge is the only military badge that can be revoked for any action that brings disrespect to the tomb. Wow. The Unknown Soldier. On the 11th of November 1921, the remains of an unknown American soldier were returned from the battlefields of France. Unidentified remains weren't uncommon during World War I. Yep. Without DNA profiling or reliable ways to match the list of missing soldiers with the discovered corpses, many bodies were simply marked as unknown. For this reason, the U.S. government approved the construction of a memorial in the Arlington National Cemetery in Virginia, United States. This is a fantastic idea because it represents the core identity of what I've spoke about in previous videos. I mean, there's so many stories during World War One and Two that completely disappear over time. Stories that you wouldn't even believe. And not only do the stories disappear over time, but the names of these soldiers who were brothers and sisters and, and friggin... Well, bro not so much sisters because there wasn't really female um, frontline soldiers back then. But this these people could be fathers, they could be you know, sons, they're, 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 they're important people who are just forgotten in time. And it's heartbreaking to think that when you go to Normandy and you look at the U.S. graves, both the U.S. and the English, um, it just goes forever, like to the horizon, these graves. And for the most part, there's probably thousands of them graves that nobody's even looked at in ages. The names just disappear over time. And the idea that they put an unknown soldier in this tomb they respect it not just as that single person but it represents the unknown soldiers that have disappeared over time and i think it's so beautiful in a way and it it's really it's really touching it really is this would be the final resting place of the returned unknown soldier and would serve as a monument to all deceased military personnel who were either lost or the remains never identified. The Amazing. remains of the unknown soldier were interred beneath a three-level white marble tomb covered in a stone slab. Intricate wow. carvings decorate the sides, including wreaths and figures representing peace, victory, and valor. The rear of the sarcophagus includes an inscription which reads, Here rests in honored glory an American soldier known but to God. God. why you shouldn't yeah i mean i'm not a religious person but that quote's awesome like it, it does it, the idea is that it the name doesn't matter but at the same time it does like what what it's trying to say is this is a soldier who protected this country the name has disappeared but we're gonna respect them anyway it doesn't matter who the name was but we're gonna respect them anyway and I think it's so cool. It's so cool. Mess with a tomb guard. While the role of the sentinel is mostly ceremonial, there are some things you just don't do when visiting the tomb of the unknown soldier. The old guards will appear strong and silent. That is until you break one of their rules. Cross yep. over the barrier into the plaza and you'll probably hear this. It is requested that all visitors remain behind the changing rails at all times. Remain behind the changing rails. Yeah. Behind the chain and rail. Nice. Good Respect lad. Respect and silence is required. Kind of reminds me of the Royal Guard in a way. Um, where people think it's fun to like go and take pictures of them and stuff. But if you, you're out of line, they'll get aggressive. Fired at all times. If you're being loud, rude, and obnoxious, you'll likely get this response. Remain standing for this ceremony. 
It is requested that everyone maintains a level of silence and respect. It is requested that everyone maintain an atmosphere of silence and respect at all times. These sentinels are very nice. similar to the Queen's Guard at Buckingham. Yeah, there you go, the Queen's Guard. Yeah. Palace. However, they aren't trained to remain still at all times. Get too close and the Sentinels will gladly point their M14 rifle straight at you. They aren't messing about. Yeah, it seems like the British Guard, the, the Queen's Guard, but like on steroids. That's what this seems like, but 10 times more serious. <laughs> Day in the And without the fuzzy hats. The <laughs> life of a tomb guard. The old guard is made up of three tomb squads or reliefs, numbered first through to third. Unlike traditional army units, tomb reliefs are organized based on height, so that the tomb guards are similar in size during the changing of the guard. The Makes three sense. reliefs are on duty, utilizing 24-hour rotating shifts. A tomb guard's day begins at 5 a.m., with arrival at the tomb quarters 1 for duty. The tomb guards will inspect the quarters, prepare their uniforms, review orders, and receive their duty assignments for the coming day. At 6 30 a.m. the tomb guards inspect the trainee's readiness and uniforms. If a trainee meets relevant standards, the tomb guard may allow them to walk the first morning guard change known as bolo at 7 a.m. The evening bolo will be the final change and walk of the day. During the I think I've seen a video of that where they're like flicking the rifle around like crazy. I'd like to see that, I think. Hours of the day, the Arlington National Cemetery is open to visitors. The tomb guards will perform several changing of the guard and wreath laying ceremonies and walking the mat. During summer hours, the changing of the guard ceremony takes place every half hour and during winter hours, every hour. Although all walks are important, the most coveted walk for a tomb guard is the midday noon moon walk. During the same time, the trainees perform mirror time, conduct uniform preparation, study knowledge, check in wreaths, and alert the tomb guards of the next changing of the guard. Ten minutes. Ten minutes. While guarding the tomb, sentinels do not display rank insignia. This is done so as not to outrank the unknown soldier. What? That is awesome. So they don't outrank the unknown soldier. Ever their rank may have been, the tomb is guarded 24 hours a day and 365 days a year. So after the evening bolo, no ceremonial changes and walks in battle dress uniforms are performed until the next morning's bolo. Guarding the tomb. So I'm, I'd like to know the story of, of where they found this unknown soldier. Because like, what happens if like, I don't know, a Nazi soldier put on an American uniform and tried to infiltrate them died and then they took that soldier and put him in the unknown tool i mean i get it it doesn't matter who the person is because it's it is an american obviously um and i'm only i'm only having a laugh but it, it makes you wonder what the story is about this person it's like the mystery behind it's pretty cool isn't it in March 1926, the U.S. decided to post a permanent guard over the tomb of the unknown soldier. Soldiers from the nearby Fort Myers, members of the 3rd Cavalry Regiment, nicknamed the Brave Rifles, were first... Wait, 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 one second. When did this say it was again? Because I said World War II, but this is like... Oh, this is way before World War II. Okay, never mind then tomb. At first, they were enlisted only during daylight hours and served just to discourage visitors to climb on or disrespect the monument. By 1937, guarding the tomb became a round-the-clock job, and yeah. on April 6, 1948, the 3rd U.S. Infantry Regiment, known as the Old Guard, was designated as the Army's official ceremonial unit, tasked That's awesome. with guarding the tomb of the unknown soldier. Old Guard Myths the Tomb Guard Sentinels have a bit of an intimidating reputation, and it's all thanks to some pretty fantastic urban myths that have surrounded the Old Guard for decades. I think they look really cool. I'm just not too sure about the sunglasses. I'm not too sure about the sunglasses, guys. I mean, I get it. I get it. We have the Queen's Guard, who, for the most part, look cool, apart from the massive hats. <sighs> I wouldn't want to wear one of them. Fortunately, we're here to separate fact from fiction. According to one urban legend, sentinels live for two years in a barracks under the tomb and are not allowed to swear, watch television, or drink alcohol for the rest of their lives. Fortunately, this is completely <laughs> false, and members of the old guard are allowed to indulge in the occasional off-duty vice. And yep. finally, it was once rumored that during Hurricane Isabel in 2003, the tomb sentinels refused orders to abandon their post, despite the inclement weather and perished in the storm. While it's a cool story, it's also bogus. While the tomb requires 24-7 guarding, contingencies are in place in case of lightning, high winds, or torrential conditions. Yeah. What do you think of the guards? Let us know in the comments below.
I think it's really cool. Why you never mess with the Royal Guard? We'd have to watch that one at some point as well. Um, when did they say this was again? Because I said World War II, and I'm obviously talking crap there because this is way before World War II. On the 11th of November, 1921. 1921, yes. Yeah, so it's way, way before World War II. Um, but still, still, this is a, a, a fantastic kind of gesture by, the, by the, uh, the US military there where they take this soldier. They don't know the name of this soldier, but it doesn't matter. That's the whole point. It doesn't matter. This soldier who has no name represents all the soldiers that have no names and if you ever get to go to france i highly recommend you go to normandy and check out um the graves from world war one and two because it is it truly hits you how many people died and it's scary you look at some of them graves i remember i was a 17 year old in training in the royal marines and i saw a royal marine 17 year old no name on it and it was scary to look at because that was a person my age doing the same thing as me but just so happened to be you know in a different time that was it and it's scary um but this soldier represents all them soldiers whose names have been gone over time and i think it's brilliant i really do um i'm just i'm just hoping that that never happens again where a soldier dies for the country and we don't know the name i hope that's the case um what do you guys think let me know in the comments down below but for now members you're amazing i love you i couldn't do this without you I honestly couldn't make these videos every single day if it wasn't for these members right here. So thank you for supporting the channel as much as you do. I truly, truly appreciate it. Um, links down below to all my socials and the obviously the new original adventures if you want to see me and my wife convert a school bus and travel the country and maybe even visit things like this. Head over to Original Adventures, both YouTube and Instagram and subscribe. Also link down below to my socials and my um, link to Discord. I nearly said two links to Discord, but we've merged it into one Discord now. And um, link down below for that. It's awesome. Also, link down below to my podcast and my Twitch stream, where I stream every Tuesday and Thursday. And also my second channel, Original Human Geek, where we play D&D and a bunch of other fun stuff. Until next time, guys, I love you all. Have a wonderful day. Goodbye.